Hey friends, how are you all and how's your preparation going? I hope it's fine. And here I am back with the AIPMT 2009 question paper with few more questions from biology section of this new question paper. And you know this time what's new? This time, you know I just heard that when you listen something, you might forget it within a few days. But when you see something, you remember it for quite a long time. And keeping this thing in mind, this time I have included pictures and diagrams along with the answer to help you understand the concepts more clearly. And when you will see the pictures and the diagrams along with the explanation of the answer, it will form a strong impact on your mind and you will remember that answer for a long time. So we won't waste any more time and we will start with question number one of AIPMT 2009 question paper of biology section. So the question number one is which one of the following has haplontic life cycle? So guys I hope you know the meaning of haplontic life cycle. So please do choose the option carefully. Okay, the right answer is option number four, that is Astilago, which is also a type of smut fungi, has got the haplontic life cycle. Here you can see the image of Astilago, the smut fungi, and how it has damaged the corn plant. And here is the microscopic structure of it. Now, you would be wondering what does haplontic life cycle means? So actually, haplontic life cycle means in such type of life cycle, the photosynthetic phase or the dominant phase is the gametophyte which is N and hence such type of life cycle is called haplontic life cycle. There are two more types of life cycles such as diplontic and haplodiplontic. In diplontic what happens is the life cycle, the, the dominant life cycle is actually the sporophyte which is 2n and some of the gymnosperms and angiosperms have got this life cycle even fucus also has diplontic life cycle in spite, in spite of being an algae and it is an exception you can note it down if you want and the third type which is the haplodiplontic type of life cycle in this the sporophyte and the gametophyte contribute equally to the life cycle of the organism Please note down the fucus point. It has got diplontic life cycle. It's a very important point and it has been given in NCRT too. Now we are moving to the next question that is question number 2. T.O. Dinner discovered which of the following? It's a very easy question. So guys the right answer is option number 3 that is T.O. Dinner discovered a free infectious RNA which was also called as viroid in 1971. Actually, it was smaller than virus and it also lacked the protein coat. That's why he named it as the free infectious RNA. Now, we will be moving on to the next question. Manitol is the stored food in which of the following? Remember, this question is very important and the portion from where it has been taken is also very important. So, you have to learn it. So, guys, the right answer is option number 4 that is fucus. Fucus, which is a type of brown algae, has got mannitol as the stored food. We are as the rest three options that is glaceralia and porphyra are a type of red algae and they contain Floridian starch as their stored food and cara is a type of green algae and it has got starch as its stored food. Now I hope this point is clear to you and please do learn the table from which this question has been taken. Now the next question is question number 4. Which one of the following is a vascular cryptogam? Again a very simple question. So the right answer is option number 2 that is equisetum. Here you can see the picture of all the four options. Equisetum, Cedrus, Markensia and Ginkgo. Out of the four, only equisetum has got the vascular bundles. Whereas the Cedrus and Ginkgo are non-vascular gymnosperms. And Markensia is a type of bryophyta. And that's why it lacks the vascular bundles. Now the next question. Question number 5. 
that is phylogenetic system of classification is based on which of the following characteristics so friends the right answer is option number 2 that is evolutionary relationships so the phylogenetic system of classification along with morphological physiological and reproductive characteristics also depends on evolutionary relationships remember this classification part is very very important so please do learn it from ncert and don't even think of skipping this portion because many that many of the times what students do they think this portion is very easy and they skip it and remember most of the questions are formed from this portion which you usually leave so please i'm telling you once again don't skip this portion now the next question is question number 6 that is which one of the following groups of animals is bilaterally symmetrical and triploblastic guys if you know the characteristics of all these four organisms which has been given in the options you can answer this question very very easily so out of the four the right answer is option number 3 that is ashyhelminthes or the round worms here you can see all the four options that has been given in the question that is round worms cylindrata tinophora and sponges out of which only the round worms are bilaterally symmetrical as well as triploblastic and if you don't know the meaning of bilateral symmetry and triploblastic organism here i am telling you actually what does bilateral symmetry means if you take an organism and you cut it from the medial portion that is you cut it from the middle part of it for example suppose you took this uh, uh, round worm and you cut it from here from the middle you cut it so the rest two halves that you will get should be exactly same that is what is called the bilateral symmetry now the another term that is triploblastic means the organism has been developed from three germinal layers that is the endoderm ectoderm and mesoderm which is true for ashyhelminthes or the round worms but not for cylindrate cynophores and sponges hence the right answer is option number 3 that is round worms i hope it's clear to you now we are moving on to the next question that is peripatus is a connecting link between which of the two phylums it's a very easy question i hope you will answer it So guys the right answer is option number 4 that is annelida and arthropoda Actually peripatus has characteristics which are similar to annelida as well as arthropoda and hence the answer is 4 And the characteristics which matches with annelida phylum are it has got jointed legs as well as nephridia for excretion which is an exclusive characteristic of annelida and the characteristics which matches with arthropoda phylum are it has got claws on the legs it has hemocele trachea for respiration which is again an exclusive characteristic of phylum arthropoda and a head with eye as well as antenna and that's the reason it is called the connecting link between the phylum annelida and arthropoda so i guess this portion is clear to you and one more point that i'm forgetting is this peripatus is also known as the living fossil and why so because from many years its structure or function has not changed and hence it is called as the living fossil now we are moving on to the next question that is question number 8 again a very interesting question Which one of the following pairs of animals comprises jawless fishes? So I hope you would have guessed it right. The correct answer is option number four, that is lampreys and hagfishes. Here is the pictures of all the fishes that has been given in the options, and the right answer, which is hagfish and lamprey, as you can see, lacks the jaw. I hope it's clear to you whereas rest of the fishes that is eel guppies mackerel and rohu has got jaws and hence the right answer is option number 4 I hope this point is clear to you
you can gaze at these pictures and wonder on the beauty of nature and please do remember the pictures of these fishes too it can be asked again in neat now we will be moving on to the next question that is question number 9 if a earthworm is pricked with a needle on its outer surface without damaging its skirt the fluid that comes out is which of the following if you read the question carefully you will be able to answer it so guys the right answer is option number 3 that is silomic fluid here you are seeing the picture of a earthworm which is alive and suppose you prick it with the needle without damaging the gut so what you will get you will get a colorless fluid which is actually the silomic fluid and hence the answer Now we will be moving on to the next question and the last question which is plasmodesmata are so we have to tell what exactly are plasmodesmatas so the right answer is option number 1 that is plasmodesmatas are actually the connection between the adjacent cells here you can see in the diagram these are two cells and this connection see this blue line from here it is coming and it's going in the another cell from here too so this portion is called the plasmodesmata and through this plasmodesmata sometimes not sometimes most of the times materials are exchanged now i hope all the questions are clear to you thank you so much for watching this tutorial and guys if you have any doubt or any queries regarding the questions or the answer or the explanation you can ask me in the comment section so please stay tuned and if you like this tutorial you can follow me on my unacademy profile and so keep studying keep working hard to achieve your goal all the best goodbye